Yeah, man. Cool. Right on. Okay. So let's begin with talking a little bit about carbon versus stainless steel knives. Um, in my research, I've kind of, uh, um, in, in the video that I'm making, again, it's, it's beginner, it's beginner centric. So I'm trying to take all this information that I've read about and that I've just picked up from you and other people and sort of condense it down into what I think is important for a beginner to understand, to start getting a, a grip on the whole universe of, of knives. So uh, in my research, I found that carbon, and correct me if I'm wrong or jump in whenever you want to, but I, I found that stainless steel is generally, now there's a lot of different kinds of stainless and carbon, but stainless steel is generally softer than carbon, which means that sure, it's a little easier to sharpen, but it might not hold its edges long. Uh, and, and because of that, you probably don't want to sharpen it too, too razor thin on like a 90-10, uh, getting ahead of myself here, but you know what I mean. And then carbon, on the other hand, uh, a lot of you know, professional cook chefs and just knife nerds in general really think it, it's cool because it you can sharpen it razor thin and it, it's going to hold that edge longer than a stainless might sharpened at the same bevel ratio. So... so yeah, the, the way I think about both of them, if you had to put them both in like two columns and then do like pros and cons of each, like it doesn't get presented all that frequently. So and so I, I will sometimes think about it working backwards from the sense of, you know, insert anybody who was making knives 300 years ago, right? And carbon as a as a metal to use to make blades, say that was your only option, right? There's a bunch of problems that come with a carbon steel knife from the sense of, like you said, it's, it's incredibly hard, which works in getting a, a bevel ratio that's going to, that can get, like you said, razor, razor thin, which, you know, gets felt as sharpness when you're cutting through things. The error with the, the problems, I suppose, that arrive, that arise from that is it's very hard, it's also brittle. And so if you're, you know, a, someone in Japan who used to make, your family used to make swords, and you just needed a sword that would be able to, you know, kill somebody, you know, if it has like those little chips in it, in the entire length of the sword blade, it still can do its job from, from, from that sense, right? But, right. but when you're talking about a blade that's a petty knife, you know, you know, maybe 150 millimeters long, any of those little chips as you're going through... A bunch of chives like you're going to feel that you know and, and, and that results in a really and it also decreases the, the 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 likelihood that that knife is going to stay nice in in the long run because once you get that little chip like you don't have that much steel to work with to kind of like smooth that out and so the the kind of like jump into people wanting to create more knife kitchen knife friendly metal alloys really came into the forefront, I, I would say, to probably acknowledge a bunch of these other problems. But as you as you said, there's trade-offs, right? So because you don't have the hardness, um, you can't get as thin of a as thin of a um, as thin of a bevel, as thin of an edge on your knife because it just it 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 can you can get there, but it's not gonna hold because it's that that softness that comes with things like stain resistance, um, or like you said, it, ease of sharpening um and and that's why i'm saying there's trade-offs to both but then i constantly come back to this idea of like what is it for you know like people can brag about like they have the sharpest knife on mm -hmm. that they bought the they bought the knife that can get the 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 finest edge in the world but then it's like there's a lot of people who buy those knives and they just sit in their drawer you know it's like or they just hang up and they, and they never sharpen them so exactly it's like, yeah it's and so my question was always like what is like do an analysis of like how much do you end up using your knife knife what do you use it for uh from the sense of like i use i do a lot of fish butchery i cut a lot of alliums right like i tell the story of i had a roommate who did his internship at momofuku and he had to cut like something ridiculous like 18 bunches of scallions a day uh for his job and so he needed oh. a knife that would hold up to that and he had his like stainless steel something something and it just wouldn't it, it just couldn't ha hold up to to just but but what he liked about it was that it was soft enough so that he could hone it every like right. four bunches of chives and the edge would come right back um which is a different you know beast entirely with carbon steel knives and so the 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 trade-offs that you get just need to be acknowledged i don't think that it's the situation of like one is going to be 
better than the other. And it's like a debate thing that people say, no, and then they slam their fist down and they say, this is the best one, uh, period, as if that there's this blanket statement that, that covers everybody and everything. And I, I just think it's silly. Like, look look at them both as, as beneficial levers that you can pull to decide, like, oh, for my butchery knife, for how I cut or for specific tasks, um, this is the one that I'm going to choose because X, Y, Z. So would you, would you, is it safe to say, and this is kind of doing exactly what you hate and putting a blanket term on something, sure. but is it safe to say for something tangible to take away for a beginner, for somebody first buying their first knife? I know you love the Misono UX10, I do too, but less about Misono, more about, do you think stainless steel is the is a good route for a beginner cook? Yeah, a thousand percent. I, I actually mm -hmm. recommend that people, like, I, I harp on the Victorinox Fibrox Pro as an amazing starting knife for people because... It's a it's a it's a thirty to forty dollar knife. The mm -hmm. steel is hard enough where you can reasonably feel like you can get a edge on it. Like you can get it sharp enough where you you can feel like, oh yeah, this is what a sharp knife feels like. But it's soft enough. The steel is soft enough where you actually feel like you can do some of the things that we're going to talk about. I'm sure later in this conversation, like kick up a burr. Um, you know, you can you can it, it's reasonably wide of a knife, so you can you can reasonably like experiment with doing different um, blade bevel ratios on it as well. And so, I don't actually recommend that people get like their first knife being this incredibly hard and brittle you know, carbon steel knife that, you know, may or may not be expensive or not, depending on if you go like, you know, blue steel, white steel, whatever you decide to go with. Yes, that might feel nice to say that you bought this whole thing, but it's almost like this. Um, I play tennis a lot. I, I think you and I have had conversations about this and there's this, this sense in tennis, it's, it's racket head size and they do it based on square inches. And so most people start with like a head size. That's like a hundred inches plus like 110 inches because you have so much bounce potential and the sweet spot is so big on a tennis racket that size that you can just focus on getting your strokes down and then roger federer play at the height of his whole you know playing career he was playing with a 93 inch racket or 90 inch racket which in the tennis world is just like insane like that's so small and your margin for error is so small and I just think of it like people buying their first carbon steel knife is like people buying Federer's racket on their first day on the court. You know, it's like, right. sure, you have the right, you have the, you have an amazing tool, but it's like, if you have no idea how to use it or take care of it, it's, it's kind of a lot, like it's, it's, it's a bit of a waste, you know, like, and, and you're not giving yourself the potential to learn. Um, so yeah, I guess there, there, there's zero reason. And there's this fallacy that people think that they can't get a stainless steel knife sharp. And it's just, it's just incorrect. Like, sure. Maybe you can, oh, maybe you no, can't yeah. do the rate. Maybe you can't do the bevel ratio that you could with a carbon knife, but to say that it's not sharp, like, again, what is it for? Like, what are you, what are you cutting that you can't cut with a perfectly sharpened fresh edge Misono UX 10? Yeah, whatever that is, it's, it, 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 you're talking about like bones or something, which you shouldn't even be carving with like a Guto or a chef's knife. Or so. it's like, I, I can't, I can't do the, the, I can't do t 20 uh horizontal tomato slices in a row for instagram it's like <laughs> why are you buying a knife again uh, like uh, remind you, you me can. i'm gonna just jump in and say that you totally can i did it yesterday with my misono boom so <laughs> boom. <laughs> done uh, there's your answer <laughs>